Greetings and welcome to the Halloween edition of the Sliders Review. And I'm here today to talk to you about Freaky, the comedy slasher movie that came out in 2020. This is a really good movie. I really enjoyed this movie. I've been wanting to see it for a very long time. It came out on Netflix, but I didn't have Netflix. But it's on HBO Max right now, so I made sure this time I was going to watch it. And I had a good time. It's mostly a comedy. And not really that much of a slasher. There are slasher elements and everything, but it's mostly that of a comedy. Think of this as Freaky Friday meets Chucky. Basically what it is, it's the serial killer of a man and he possesses the body of a young high school girl through this like voodoo type knife or dagger type thing. And so of course he's parading around as her still trying to be like a serial killer and stuff while she's trying to prove her innocence in him. Now it is a good movie, but there are some cringe moments. Some of the dialogue is really cringe at times. Some of it's really funny, but sometimes it could be a little cringy. Like when the, um, they had swapped bodies and they had captured the killer in the girl's body. Um, I think the love interest dude, he uh, said, you know, what do we do with him? And no, no, no. He says, what do we do with her? Like he's referring to the female body, not the soul that's in there. And the best friend girl is all like, um, pronouns. It's all like, it's a him. I'm just like, what? Why would you say something so dumb like that? <laughs> and everything. I mean, uh, clearly he got it confused because he's thinking about the body, not the soul that's in there and stuff. And that was just like off the, off the wall, just cringy and stuff. And you know, and it's mostly that was written in there because two of the stars in there um, have changed their pronouns and they're doing a the whole pronoun representation. But the way they keep doing it in modern day television and movie isn't coming off genuine. It's coming off as just corny. And so they need to write it in a more genuine type way. Now, one problem, some, well, some problems I do have in this movie is that this does fall under the category of a very modern day um, era type thing. Now I'm all cool because they, they did this cool thing with the movie. I like that they did. They flipped the script instead of like a, a male killer, you know, of course, switch the body. It's then the female killer and stuff, you know, uh, you know, the soul of the man is in there. So I like that. My problem is they made every man into like a, a, a crummy, crappy, monstrous type person. All the male characters, except for the male love interest and the gay guy in the show, well, that show with the movie. I'm thinking of a show. I'm thinking of TV, streaming, but a movie. They're the only two nice people there. And um, everybody else is a monster. Everybody else is either trying to kill somebody, be rape women, um, sexual assault people, like you name it. I mean, every male that you see here, except for the two cops. But since they are barely in the movie, they're the only two good cops there, or the two only good guys. So. It doesn't really come genuine because they're barely in the movie and they're just there to be cops. Although the gay dude, he is sassy rude in the beginning, but he l later turns into like a really cool person later on. But he does start off as a stereotypical sassy rude like gay guy and everything. But he's very hilarious in like the movie. But like, so this movie has that flaw where they think every guy is a monster. Now there are two crappy women, or there's three crappy women in this. But two of them, of course, get redeemed, make them not look crappy, and one ends up dying. Now, speaking of the people who are dying, okay, in traditional slasher movie form, innocent good people end up losing their lives in slasher movies. In this, however, it's all the crappy bad people who lose their lives. There's about 10 people who probably die in the entire movie. And they're all bad people, even the females and stuff. So it's kind of like that defeats the whole purpose of a slasher movie if you're just going to go after the people who have it coming towards them. That, and it's just kind of like it's like a victory moment because like, yeah, they get to die and everything. But the whole thing about a slasher thing is that the bad person goes after the good people. When the bad person goes after the bad people, then it's almost like the bad person's an anti-hero, you know? So I don't like how they did that. Um... <laughs> And so, like, that's one major problem I have with this and everything. It's just, why would you go after only the bad people and stuff? Now, 
in terms of the two bad females it's the mom and it's the sister who's a cop now the mom she is like an alcoholic she's not there for her daughter her daughter only gets attacked because her mom was not there to pick her up at night and so it's like so she's a crappy mother but then halfway in the movie we find out why she's a crappy mother her, her husband died a year ago and she's lonely and tries to date and all this other stuff and it's just not working out and so then she tries to save her daughter from like the killer at the end so they try to redeem her the sister's more like oh i don't like you blah 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 you know she's an adult and a cop but then later on she tries to rescue her sister so they always do that and i hate when they do that male versus crap female thing in terms of who's a monster who's not they always have to redeem the female but they never redeem no guy like that and so that's the whole modern like you know trope that's been going around lately and stuff and it's so annoying and everything now this movie it starts off of course with the, the, the killer is played by vince vaughn and so like vince vaughn hasn't been in much of nothing in like forever so thank god he's in something something that's good and so like this i don't know if it came out in theaters but it came out on streaming so at least he's trying to get his career back in some capacity now he's your typical 80s slasher he's a big brute of a man that's very strong and he just kills for the sake of killing don't know why they don't go into that story he lives in a crappy rundown abandoned like home that's very grotesque and everything and very scary so he's your typical 80s slasher he kills a bunch of teenagers in, in a house they all had it coming to them um, this is one cringy scene, my God. So a guy goes down on a girl. Oh, no, he's doing the girl. He's banging her and everything, and then she gets hers, but he's all like, what about me? She's just like, ah, nah, that's all right. So they're doing that whole reverse thing where guys always get there, but the, the girl doesn't. And it's supposed to be some kind of like female empowerment, but it's not. It just makes her look crappy. Like two wrongs just don't make a right. I wish they would stop that crap and do real female empowerment. But all those teens um, end up getting slashed because, you know, they're terrible people who are bullies and stuff um so we get to our main character and she's played by katherine newton now she's gonna replace kathy yang i think her name is um uh, in ant-man the third movie the daughter you know scott lane's daughter she has now been cast in that role i don't know why they recast the other adult actress but you know whatever <laughs> now i've always liked katherine um newton I, I saw her in um little women and she was really good in that she plays this dopey dork of a girl who nobody really pays attention to and everybody's a bully to her guys girls it doesn't matter and so she does a really good job at playing that and um so basically you know she's the mascot her mom does not pick her up um at the end of a game and so like but she has a crush on this one dude so at least one person likes her and he gives her advice about setting your clock five minutes ahead because like you know she's always late for class and her wood shop teacher dude played by alan rook he is really rude to her and stuff so everybody's rude to her and so Vince Vaughn's killer comes in, tries to kill her. Um, he stabs her with the voodoo dagger. Her sister, who's a cop, because she had called her sister, but the phone died out, and then shot um, at Vince Vaughn's character. So when he stabbed her, all of a sudden, this is where the CGI comes in. It turns into like this Egyptian type tomb type thing. It's some type of Aztec type dagger. Um, and so, like, um, you know, stuff like that. And then he has a wound too because when you stab somebody the same wound comes on you and he has a wound too because when you stab somebody with this dagger somehow an identical wound will come on you and so the transference doesn't happen right then it happens later when they're asleep and so you know and then the whole freaky friday thing starts to happen and what i like about it is how they play like the other character and everything she does a great job of this menacing look and you know when she goes to school because like he's like the old school slasher he's disturbed he doesn't understand anything about what's going on in the world and stuff he's just there to like slash and gash you know and when vince vaughn plays her he plays her up very well as a girl like a girly girl to where when you look at him, you can kind of see a little bit in her um because he's trying so hard to like mimic that of like a girl but the only problem is is that 
he's acting like a stereotypical girly girl but we've never seen her act that way so it's kind of weird you know what i'm saying because she doesn't act like that way through the rest of the movie when it's, she's just her but nevertheless he is like playing it up really really well and so you know when she goes to school see here's the thing like she meets like one of the girls bullies right and so like so she ends up like killing her and stuff and like when she kills her she's not like an innocent person think about a slasher you want to kill somebody who's innocent but then if somebody's a bad person you want them to get their come up and everything you know and so like but when she starts to try to kill like other people like guys for example like the teacher i like how the writers were smart enough to remember that she is technically in a teenage girl's body and so like the killer has a hard time trying to kill people that's much bigger than that of a teenage girl and he really 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 struggles on everything but he's still able to get the kills now this kills always outlandish crazy like kills to do come in half with the bandsaw and everything like that now of course um vince bonk um character like when he's um, when the girl's in the guy's body you know she has a hard time making people believe you know who she is and stuff like that and so when she goes to like the school and stuff of course the best friends are freaked out but she's able to like you know tell them you know like things that only they would know and so they're like the special like handshake and stuff that they have so it's like they're just like weirded out by this but her best friends are really great in this movie because they really help her out and stuff which becomes a problem because when she of course meets her um body with the killer inside of course the killer's smart enough to like fake like an attack and be all like oh look it's the killer he's coming to kill me again and everything so then of course the police get called and stuff like that and so like of course when they're driving the sister who's a cop seeing them all driving so she chases after them she should know that you know they're accomplice but doesn't really trigger in her head now one stupid thing they do is that they put a mask on the killer their best friend's like face and it's a stupid rubber mask and you can tell that it's a giant man wearing a man's mask on his face and that's the, the thing about that when it gets a little too comedic in the movie you know but then they try to like redeem the mother character when he's hiding in like or she's hiding in the like you know dressing room the mom who works in the store it's just letting it all out about why she is the way she is and how she loves her daughter and how she's not a good mom and why she drinks it's because the husband died a year ago and of course there's that awkward scene where she's all like well you know you have a nice sounding voice mind we date and everything like that all the girl had to do was say i'm gay but he, she doesn't do that she's just all like no i don't want to date you and stuff like that <laughs> and so throughout the entire movie of course they're looking for her they're trying to figure out what's going on they talk to a teacher who knows about aztec like culture and stuff and she tells them about like the dagger and so they only have a certain amount of time where they can do the transference again and so eventually they do end up finding um the killer and stuff in their friend's body and so like they tie her up and they bring her back to like the best friend dude's house and stuff this is one of the corniest things i heard with the whole like pronouns and stuff because okay look they find a love interest and they convince the love interest that hey they swap bodies so he believes them and stuff when they go back he said what do we do with her but it's the hers it's the female's body but it's the guy inside and so the friends all like pronouns get it correct and i'm just like dude how is somebody supposed to like remember that? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, like it's a freaky Friday thing. It's thing like this don't happen. When you see the female body, you're gonna call the female female, even though know, there's really a dude's brain inside it and stuff, or consciousness or soul or whatever. And so I hate corny dialogue like that. It just seems out of place and just like stupid <laughs> and stuff. And so like, there's like a dance type thing going on and of course like you know 
the killer, of course, is going to get away because the dude's mom comes home. And she's all like, why is she tied up and everything? And so, you know, then the killer tries to kill both of them. And it's just like crazy, crazy, you know. But in a way, it's like a dance and everything. And they have to go there. They have to find the killer. Eventually, with all the shenanigans and everything that happens, um, they do end up, um, I think, going to like the police station because somebody got like arrested. I think I think they found like they found no something happened. I forget what happens. I think um, the sister tried to keep the other sister safe and kept her in jail. Something like that. I can't remember what exactly. But then there's an awkward, nasty moment that just creeped me out. So as the love interest and the girl who's still inside the man's body are talking in the back seat and nobody's there, they start to have a moment. And so, you know, they're confessing their feelings for one another. Now, the problem I have with this is you have to remember in the state of this world, this universe, it's a grown man in his 50s kissing that of a teenage boy, even though inside the body is that of a teenage girl, the spirit. And I hate that. I don't like it when they try to... Um, romanticize and make like, you know, um, adults and teenagers glamorous for people. You know what I'm saying? Like they could have waited until they switch bodies. It's not the fact that two dudes kiss. It's the fact that one in this universe is a grown man's body and one is that of a teenage boy body. And it's kind of like what stuff is going on in the real world. The last thing a person needs to see, be like, oh, okay, that's normal. Like adults and teenagers just like hooking up. Like what if somebody, like a young person will just turn on the TV and like the movie's on or whatever. And they come to that spot and they don't know what's going on with the movie, but they see that. You know what I'm saying? And television has all, and all these like teen drama type stuff, they're always trying to romanticize students and like teachers. And I hate that crap. So it's a very awkward like kiss and everything. And so in a way they get to like the party and stuff. And so when they're at the party, of course, they everybody's getting separated and they're looking for like the real killer in the in the female girl body. And so this is another part I don't like. Because one, even though stuff like this does happen in real life. It just doesn't fit well in a slasher comedy movie. And not only does it fit, it doesn't fit, but it's like they're trying to make all the men who are um, in this like as monsters and stuff. So at one point, this one dude sees like the, the teenage girl who's the killer and stuff, right? And he lures her to like a spot like, hey, you want to go here? So she goes there. As soon as he lures her there, here come three other guys. They're looking to assault her and everything. And I'm just kind of like, where in the world did this come from and stuff? Okay, granted, yes, it does happen in real life. And yes, stuff like this should be addressed. But it, it just feels so left out of field being in that of a slasher comedy and everything it just came completely out of nowhere and i'm just like why did they throw that in if you want to do that do it in a drama do it in like you know a show or a movie that is supposed to be about sexual assault and stuff but this was just like thrown in there to be like look men are monsters then there's another terrible scene that i hate so when remember the gay best friend when he's like looking so i'm calling everybody like female best friends stuff like that because i forget their names now <laughs> and everything i've only watched this one time and when i was first um recording the audio that was like a couple of weeks ago so now it's about like three weeks later oh no about yeah three weeks later and so like, i forgot everybody's name and so like the gay dude and everything like he asked just this random boy at the party you know have you seen what's her face and he's all like yeah i'll go take you to her so then when he takes the um he takes him to this other room he just grabs him and kisses him and so the gay best friend is kind of like dude what the world are you doing he's all like if you tell anybody i'll beat your behind and he and so this was another time they try to make men look like monsters and like assault people and stuff and yes, true, granted, that still does happen. 
like people who are closeted and don't want nobody to know and they will take somebody to some place and then start, start like trying to make out with them or they'll try to make out with whoever they know is like gay and like i said before it is important and it should be addressed and why it's wrong to like do something like that to somebody but this feels so out of place in like the movie and stuff it just comes out of nowhere but it's just modern day t um um hollywood telling it like look all men are monsters and all this other crap so of course um they find like you know like the killer and everything eventually and then they swap bot on um, bodies back and everything and so they end up like as soon as the bodies um swap you know the friend tells like you know the cops like shoot that guy and everything and so because they know it's like the killers like you know the dude who's always killing people and strangling people and all this other stuff so they shoot the crap out of him and stuff like that and it's like the only problem i have that i'm glad he got his comeuppings and everything but you're not supposed to just open fire because a teenager tells you to you have to have like an actual reason and they didn't like uh, they know he's dangerous but they didn't he didn't attack them but of course this is a movie and stuff like that plus also when he was in the girl's body and remember those dudes tried to like assault him and stuff he ended up murdering those guys now once again yeah they had their comeuppings but the thing about a slasher is that it's more intense and stuff like that when it's an innocent person getting attacked as opposed to like an evil dirty bad person getting attacked because then you like feel sorry for the innocent person you know the killer is like a really bad person but when the killer is going around killing bad people it's almost like being a vigilante and stuff you know so anyways we think the killer is dead. Nope, somehow this fool survived because the horror slasher movie rules, you know, so he escapes the ambulance and everything in the police custody and he goes back to the home of the girl. This is when her and her mother and her sister all fight him off and then the young teenage girl is now able to whoop on him <laughs> and kill him solid and everything. And it's kind of like, how? Because this dude is like literally six foot tall and like 200 and something pounds and stuff. But it is nice to see the final girl, of course, kill like, like the killer and everything. And so, yeah. Even though, like, this is silly and everything, it's a pretty cool, awesome slasher comedy movie. And, you know, it would have been a whole lot cooler. They took out the cringe and the awkwardness, and they should have put it, like, in theaters and stuff. It was actually a pretty cool movie and stuff. That wasn't that spooky. Alright, well, I shall talk to y'all later. Bye. <laughs> uh, 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 uh.